Hello and welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B. Happy to have you guys with me this evening. Guys, this has been a week that has absolutely just driven me up the wall. Um, as you can see from the title, this has been the nightmare before Christmas in a real massive way. So, I've got a couple things I want to cover with you, a few things I just want to get on camera. So, let's get right to it. First of all, uh, I've got something I want to show you guys. So, as you know, this is my F106 Mining Finder. It's the one that everybody wishes they had. It is one of the best mining finders in game. So it is currently ready to be tiered up to tier 7. So I don't tier a lot of stuff. When I do tier it, I like to get it on camera. That way we can preserve it for future use uh, so that we can see exactly what it takes to tier certain things. So let's go ahead and let's just get to it. I'm just going to get it done and out of the way so everybody can see it and that way we know if the wiki is right. So we're going to hit tier upgrade. So it takes 221, or I'm sorry, 217 animal liver oil, uh, 138 simple three conductors, 542 pile of rubies, 2,894 laser fragments and 196 tier 7 components. Uh, so actually the wiki was correct. As of this recording on November 10th, 2020, the wiki was accurate on what it would take to upgrade it. So let's go ahead and upgrade it real fast. Bam! Upgrade successful. The F-106 has reached tier 7. Shrapnel received 722.82 ped. So the TT value, 90% of the TT value is 722 ped TT. So it was actually closer to like 790 ped TT to upgrade it. Just that one tier. Uh, so, wow, absolutely stupendous. I'm going to go ahead and screenshot that just to be able to pre preserve it. Um, so, and then there you can see right there, 7.2 million ped. Uh, actually, if you look at it, it, it actually carries the decimal 722.82, but it's 7,228,289 uh, shrapnel that I got for carrying it. So it actually carried the decimal out several places. So we're going to add this to my pile of shrapnel. So I want you guys to see this. My shrapnel, I have uh, 41,797,746 shrapnel at the moment. Uh, that's 4,179 pen. So we're going to go ahead and add this to the pile. And I now have 4,902.60 ped. I have $490 worth of shrapnel alone. Uh, I've got about 218 Halloween boxes. So Halloween Mayhem officially ended last night. As you can see from the screenshot on the video for the thumbnail, I hit my biggest Hall of Fame ever. Uh, it was 3,500 ped. I did it at the very end of my run. But, and that's really what I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight because somebody brought up a very good question of how do you make unlimited ammo? How do you essentially just keep your ammo going forever? Um, how do we create a perpetual motion machine? So guys, before we get into that, I wanted to bring up something about mayhem. So I've been in nine mayhems now. I started in, uh, or actually more than that. It's almost, uh, I think it's been, yeah, nine. Nine. I started with Halloween 2018, I did Christmas, then I did all the 2019s, and now we're back around to Halloween. So this was Mayhem number nine. This is the very first Mayhem I haven't placed. I got crushed. I got like 20th place. So first of all, I, I want to point something out. Good news, everyone. We that means that you guys can actually have a chance at winning. So, the thing about it is, it's not something where even the best players with the best gear are guaranteed to win. I tried a new strategy that I thought would help me out, and it did the exact opposite. I got reamed with Mayhem literally the entire time. Uh, it was the most horrendous runs I have ever had inside of Mayhem. 
it, it was absolutely just bad from a score perspective, from a competition perspective. It was as bad as it comes. So what happened? Well, it wasn't the strategy. It wasn't everything that I was doing. Um, it was just luck. So the thing with Mayhem, with Annihilation, and I've said this before, is a lot of it comes down to luck. You have to get those big point awards, and I just didn't do it. No matter how fast I killed, no matter how many mobs I killed, no matter how many times I ran, uh, I just didn't get any of the good hits. And, you know, I've had Mayhems go the opposite. I've had Mayhems where my second kill was a 5,000 point award. So it does happen. I used a lot of ammo, a lot of guns, and a lot of pills, and I just killed as fast as I could, and the luck just was not with me. Um, one second, guys. So, the thing about it is, I'll actually look at the Mayhem scores. I'll, sh I'll show you guys, I'm not lying, I really got 20th. Uh, it was impressively bad. If I'm going to get beat, I want to get beat so bad that it's not even funny. So, it looks like Vengeful got first. Uh, good for them, good job Vengeful for Cat 3. Uh, you really need a score of about eight, fifteen to 20,000 to place in the top three. Doctor got second. Uh, best BG got third. Uh, uh, two Cookies got fourth. Two Cookies didn't even have a great run. She usually gets second or, or third somewhere in there. She's right up there with me, maybe even first. So if you come all the way down here to like 20, uh, sure enough, number 20, Stevie B, only 8,700 points. It was horrendous. I think that's the worst Mayhem score I've ever recorded, ever. Um, I didn't even try an or, uh, Survival. I just, I, I was so done, I just didn't even try. Last year, I think I got like 10th in Survival, and I just didn't even go for it this year because I was just that done with it. Um, so here's the deal. So as I'm going through Mayhem, you know, there's a couple of, of, of globals here and there. Uh, I actually managed to string three globals together in a space of like five minutes at one point. Um, I had 110 pet global right off the bat, and then I had a whole bunch of like 60 petters, and then I didn't have another three digit one for quite some time. A couple days in, I hit a 700 pet hoff. It was like 711 pet, uh, which was only like number 90 or 92 on the on the hoff board, and then. I was, I was actually doing pretty good. I was more or less, whenever you counted the decay from the guns and the amps and everything, I was more or less TT even uh, because my ammo pile was growing because of the decay, but I was more or less TT even. And then the last three hours of mayhem, something flipped. Something just went off and my decay was going through the roof and my ammo pile was shrieking. And I actually was talking to a friend while I was running, which I try not to do while I'm competing, but I knew it was the, the ass end of a run, and it just was not going to be a good run. And I said, you know, I desperately need a Hoff. Uh, I should be getting one here pretty quick. Because what we know is if you go over a very long period of time, this the returns are pretty stable. Now, they're not going to be 100%. They're closer to the area of like 90 to 94%. But we know that the, the returns, long term, the more you cycle, the more you hunt, the faster you kill, the more stable your, your returns. And I'd been at it for quite some time. So I said, you know, I, I really need this Hoff that's coming. And literally, within about three minutes of saying that, I got the Hoff swirl. And I looked, and at first I thought it was a 350 pet Hoff. No, it was a 3,500 pet Hoff. So my biggest Hoff prior to today was 2200 ped it was my very first mayhem it was halloween mayhem and it was a category one creature i hit for like 2400 ped i hit another halloween creature last year for 2200 ped uh, i hit a summer mayhem creature for 1100 and then now i've hit this one for 3500 so my biggest one to date uh but i i'm more proud of the fact that i've kind of gotten to know how the game works to the point that i more or less called I've got a Hoff headed my way, and bam, there it is. Um, so the thing is, one of the things I do like about Mayhem, one of the very, very few things, is it forces you to hunt so long, so fast, without stopping, that you get a much better idea of how loot returns work. Now, you don't get all the items. It's more or less a shrap fest. Uh, all you really get is shrap mill, some output amplifiers, and boxes. That's pretty much it. I did get a uh, limited Armatrix, uh, I think it was an LP, 
P40 perfected uh, mayhem. But anyway, long story short, you, you almost always get shrapnel boxes and output amplifiers short of getting a limited mayhem weapon or some limited mayhem armor, which is very, very rare. Out of all the globals I got, all the hops I got, I only got one item in that. And it was that LP40 perfected, I think. Let's check. I've got it right here. Yeah, it was a AMP series Mayhem LP40 perfected, and it wasn't even full TT. It's only 75% of full TT, and if you look at the tier rates, it sucks. The tier rate's only 9 over 4,000, so if you're lucky, this might get to like tier 1 someday uh, before it burns up. So, I mean, it's so good, don't get me wrong, it's got good markup, I'm glad I got it, but it's just so rare to get limited items to drop in Mayhem. So, the thing about it is, it forces you to run so long you see how the globals really don't make you money. They just take the variance out of it. They just keep you more or less even. And if you run a very, very long mayhem, like all the way through without stopping, if you get lucky, what you'll run into is an hour or two where you're just getting creamed. You're just losing money hand over fist. And then that huff comes along and it puts you right back to TT even or even TT positive in some cases. Uh, now, it could go the other way. You could go the full 10 hours and, and end up down, and that does happen to a lot of people. But my experience has been if you run right with the right setup, uh, with the right kill speed, and you're killing very, very quickly, and you're, you're not stopping, then what ends up happening is the returns are pretty even, and it gives you a broader sense of how returns work in the game. So the reason this is important is somebody asked me during Mayhem, they said, how do you get infinite ammo how do you keep hunting infinitely and at first i popped off and the the smart ass answer was pull out your visa card and purchase ammo in the web shop but i really spent some time thinking about this and here's something i think a lot of new players do not understand you cannot create easily anyway a perpetual motion machine so what is a perpetual motion machine? A, a perpetual motion machine is a machine that you turn on that automatically creates enough energy to keep running itself. Um, it's, it's physically impossible due to the law of physics to create such a machine. So look at a car, for example. So when you turn a car on, the battery powers a lot of the systems, right? But as the battery is on, the battery is drained of it, the energy that's in it. So what keeps the battery running? The alternator. This is why if your alternator goes out, your battery will die. If your alternator goes out, the car will still run for a little while, but then your battery will die and the car will quit running. As your car is running, the alternator is constantly recharging your battery, constantly replacing the energy that it's putting out. But in order to get the alternator to run, you have to put gasoline in the tank. As that gasoline burns, the alternator runs. As the alternator runs, it recharges the battery. This all makes the car go, go. Once that gas is gone, that alternator is not going to continue running. It's not going to continue charging the battery. Um, so that's why you constantly have to put gas in. Now, if you, if you had a magical gasoline that never burned out, that you could put in one gallon, and it would just run forever, and you had a magical alternator that would never break and a magical battery that would never just quit charging then the gasoline could forever power the alternator which could ever forever power the battery and everything would just keep going but there's no way to get the battery to replenish the gasoline right so so you cannot have a, per, a perpetual motion machine this has been proven time and time again in physics there's no such thing it is physically impossible so in a similar manner, it is impossible to just continuously hunt without stopping and assume that the game's always going to give you enough ammo to continue. So you have to find a way to fix this because inevitably what happens as a new player is you have a limited number of weapons at your disposal, you have a limited amount of ped, and you have a limited number of bullets or ammo or shrapnel to convert. And eventually what's going to happen at some point, yes, we have plenty of spit, smacks, and sips for all the hitters. Eventually what's going to happen at some point is you're going to reach a point where you simply have no more ammo and no more shrapnel. So you've only really got a couple of options. And this is one of those things where you kind of have to find your own way, guys. Option number one. 
you can literally just pull out your your visa card and you can go to the web shop and you can purchase ammo refill packs or boxes or whatever you want to buy to get you more ammo that's option number one a lot of people don't like that option option number two is somewhat sustainable and that is the what i call circle of life so the circle of life is you come and you equip this thing called the vse mk1 that they give you when you start and you go sweat and you go to a sweat circle you sweat you get some sweat and then you try and sell that sweat for as much as you can on the open market now not 10 pettit per thousand that's not realistic but you sell what sweat you can at the price that you can then you take that money you take the pen that you make, you come over to the trade terminal, you go to ammunition, and you buy either BLP packs for BLP weapons, weapon cells for laser weapons, or synthetic mind essence for mind force, and you go hunt. And as you hunt, you get shrapnel. Now you convert that shrapnel back to ammo, universal ammo, which is green, like this, cannot be traded or sold. So you cannot sell it to the TT, you cannot sell it to another person but you convert it to universal ammo you use it for mind force you use it for hunting and then as you hunt you get shrapnel and then you continue to convert it. it but here's the problem eventually you're going to run out again so you've got to repeat this you've got to go sweat some more you've got to collect the sweat you've got to sell it and you've got to continue and for a lot of people that might be how you do it starting off but there's an important step in there and this is where you need to learn this early i cannot stress this enough as you're hunting in that loot that you get not only will you get shrapnel you will get all this other crap that fills your storage called loot you have to sell this stuff now let's assume that all the loot you got was literally just shrapnel and blazer fragments that's it you sweat you buy ammo you go hunt and all you get is shrapnel and blazer fragments you convert the shrapnel to continue hunting and in the meantime you sell the blazer fragments for markup this provides you with more ped so that instead of having to go sweat you can take that ped you can buy more ammo and now you can go hunt some more this speeds the process up now instead of just sweating and selling it as a free-to-play player now you're actually getting loot selling that loot for markup making money from the game itself on a little bit bigger scale than you were when you were sweating and now this is speeding things up for you the, the whole key is you want to get to a point where you can sell loot as efficiently and as quickly as humanly possible because the faster you sell it and the more markup you make, the more ped you can purchase. Or, I'm sorry, the more ammo you can purchase with your ped. The more hunting you can do. The more hunting you can do, the faster you get loot that you can sell. The faster you sell that loot for markup, the faster you can buy more ammo to go hunt some more to get more loot faster. You just continue this over and over and over and over again. So that is why markup and loot is so important. There's no way to create a perpetual motion machine in Entropia where you're just constantly looting more and more ammo. It's not going to happen. It's a deplenishing resource. So you have to find a way. At the bare bones, you can go sweat and sell the sweat but you're still selling something for markup. You're selling that sweat for markup, right? So now just take your loot that you get and replace the sweat with loot. Sell that loot for markup and then do the same thing. Now, there is one other thing that you guys can do. And this is something that I did early on. So what I would do, because I wanted to focus on both skills, profit, and ammo, is I would go sweat. I would sell that sweat. I would take the ped. And then instead of buying ammo, what I would do is I would come over here to the TT, I would go to weapons, and I would buy either a set of brass knuckles, or I would buy a sword, or I would buy a dagger. I would take that dagger, that sword, or those brass knuckles, and then I would go hunt some more. And the reason I would do that is these three items from the trade terminal do not use ammo. It is 100% decay. Now because of that, they do decay very, very quickly. You're not going to get a lot of hunting with these. But... As you're decaying these items down, A, you're gaining skills, you're skilling up, but B, you're looting shrapnel along with other loot that you can sell for markup. So then what I would do is once the item was fully decayed, I would sell it off to the trade terminal because I no longer need it. So now I've got some melee skills, now I've got some strength. I would take the shrapnel that I got from hunting, I would convert it to ammo, I would go put my loot on auction for sell, and then I would go hunt again. 
So I added the additional step of once I got my sweat and sold it, instead of just going straight to the TT and buying ammo, I went to the TT and got melee weapons that had decay only, no ammo. Yes, they decay much faster. No, you don't get a long hunt with them. But I would use that to hunt, which got me the shrapnel I needed, and I was getting skills, and I was getting strength, and then I would then convert the shrapnel to ammo and hunt with my laser weapons or my BLP weapons as I'm selling the loot, and then I'm, I'm continuously selling the loot. Once I had sold all the loot and ran out of ammo again, now I go sweat a little bit, I sell the sweat, now I take the profit from sweating, I take the profit from selling loot, I go back to the trade terminal, I buy another knife, another sword, and another pair of brass knuckles, I turn around, I go hunting some more, I get more shrapnel, I just repeat this entire process. Um, now, there's other things you can do. You can convert your shrapnel into universal ammo, and you can go mine with it. Notice that I've got universal uh, ammo on me. Notice I do not have any survey probes. I have no survey, survey probes, right? But if I equip my F-106, notice that I've got 225 uses if I'm looking for both energy and in matter. And notice it's because I'm using universal ammo, right? So I can use universal ammo to mine. So instead of using it to go hunt, if I didn't want hunting loot, if I wanted mining loot for some reason, I could do that too. I could just turn it into universal ammo, then I could go mine with it. So there really is no perpetual motion machine that you can build inside of Entropy that's going to continuously allow you to hunt, get shrapnel, make ammo, repeat indefinitely. It's just not there by the nature of it being a real cash economy. However, there are different paths that you can take to make this process easier. Um, the, the easiest thing, if you really want to get good at Entropia fast, is just learn to sell your loot as fast and as efficiently as possible for as much markup as possible. Because at the end of the day, that's the only way you're going to really get anywhere making money with Entropia. It just is. So the faster, or the sooner I should say, the sooner you get good at selling your loot and figuring out what price and what markup and what stacks and when, uh, that's going to go the furthest in helping you have the pen that you need to constantly buy the ammo and the shrapnel that you need to continue hunting. Number two, if you are free to play or low depot, don't be afraid to spend some time sweating. That sweat does have value. It does have a use. And there are people who need it, and you can sell it. Uh, right now, me, myself, I've got 146,000 sweat. I will use every single bit of that crafting. Uh, I will probably go sweat some more, I'm sure. That's why I don't buy it, because I just slowly collect it myself. Because I need it. Uh, there is a need for sweat in game. We just have a huge oversupply. We always have, always will, by the nature of it being something that everybody can get for free if you're willing to put in the time. But if you're a free-to-play player, don't be afraid to sweat. Go sell it. Make some money, because you're, you're essentially selling a loot. Sweat is a loot. You get it from a creature by doing a thing. And that thing doesn't cost money, but it takes you time, right? So you're selling it to other players for markup. It's something they can get for free and they're willing to pay you for it. This is the same thing you do with your loot. It's just you're getting it for free instead of having to spend decay and ammo burn to go get it. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid if you are okay with it taking a little bit longer to get to your goals to use some of those TT weapons that are melee based that have decay only in order to grind some melee skills at a higher decay rate while getting the shrapnel that you need. Uh, if you just are focused on getting to where you have as much shrapnel and as much hunting time as possible, skip that step. But there are ways to do it. There's also, and I hate to, to kind of toot my own horn here, earnped.com. Go over there while you're sweating, while you're hunting, while you're doing those other things, be doing those hideout videos, be doing those surveys, be, be doing those offers that are on earnped.com for you guys to get your earned pen balance up. Is it a ton? No, but every little bit counts. Guys, we had a guy the other day who withdrew 1,100 PED, 110 US dollars from EarnPed.com. If he can do it, you can do it. And his only key to success was consistency. That was it. He consistently did this day in and day out for like three months and made 110 US dollars. Okay, that goes a long way when buying ammo, especially as a new to play player. There are guns out there. Let me put this in perspective for you guys. So right now I've got a BP-35 on me with some damage enhancers on it. So it's burning 2100 ammo a shot. My BP-20 FEN 
with no damage enhancers, burn 646 ammo per shot. It's very, very eco. That's why it has an 83.2% efficiency rate. Ammo lasts forever with that thing. But as a new player, a free-to-play player just starting out at Camp Icarus, new to the game, you're going to be using weapons that have an even lower ammo burn. Um, let's say you have one of these. These are a fairly common new player weapon. They're fairly easy to loot. Uh, 89 ammo per shot. Less than 100 ammo per shot. Uh, the Azura, one of the most often used weapons in the game for new players. 69 ammo per shot. Uh, if you have the Buckins rifle and you want to go hunt some Exosaurs, where's my Buckins at? Buckins, Buckins, Buckins. Buckins rifle. Uh, 131 ammo per shot. So guys, e e even 100 ped worth of ammo will last you guys or I'm sorry, $100 worth of ammo, 1,000 ped, will last people a very, very, very long time in game. Um, especially at that, that newer player level. So guys, unfortunately, there is no way to make it a perpetual motion machine uh, where you just constantly get more and more, but there are ways to play smarter, not harder, that allow you to get in more hunting time and move that cycle faster than other people who don't know how this cycle works. The sooner you get into being good at getting sweat and selling it, the sooner you get good at selling your loot for markup as you get it and as you stack it, then the faster you will be able to create that hunting cycle. You will have less downtime waiting on your stuff to sell. You'll get more markup, so you'll be able to get, do bigger cycling hunts and cycle more ped per time. And then ideally, what you want to do is you want to get to a point where your hunts are so long and you're killing so fast that then you start benefiting from the algorithm itself. You get to the point where you've got enough ammo and you've, you've got enough pet on hand that you can do that 10-hour run. And you're going through that 10-hour run and you're, you're more or less even. And then you have that moment where you're down a little bit and then bam, you hit that Hall of Fame and you get back to TT even or maybe even a TT positive, right? So if you can get your ammo cycle to that point where you've got enough ped, enough weapons, and enough ammo to do those longer hunts, it's only going to benefit you. Because when you're doing very small hunts, it's like walking into a casino, putting a dollar in a slot machine, and hoping that you get rich. It's not going to work. But as a mentor of mine once said, he said, I hit jackpots all the time, but a $10,000 jackpot might cost me $100,000 to hit. Well, again, guys, the key is longer hunts. Uh, even whenever I go hunt, it, it, if I'm hunting something like Exosaurs, I don't expect them to global very often because it's such a low cost to kill. It's just not going to happen that often, but it will happen. But if I'm hunting Exosaurs 10 hours a day, every day, for a month, I'm probably going to hit a couple of globals that are going to even out my ups and my downs, right? If I go hunt level 5 Argonauts, I try not to hunt level 5 Argonauts if I'm not going to kill at least 500 and preferably 1,000 or more in one setting very quickly because if I just go hunt five or six I, I'm really not doing myself any benefit there's there's really not even a point but if I'm hunting a thousand to three thousand in one setting not only am I going to get a lot of loot that I can turn around and resell pretty quickly for a markup I'm giving myself a chance to hit those globals to hit those hall of fames that are going to take the variance out of my run which are going to make the entire cycle easier because I'm not going to have to constantly be running back to auction to throw stuff on right away. Now, I still, no matter how the run goes, want to get my stuff on auction pretty quickly and get it sold, but I don't have to do it every five seconds to, to keep going, right? So guys, this has been Stevie B's Nightmare Before Christmas. It was the worst mayhem ever. It was an absolute nightmare. But the good news is, that does go to show anybody can win mayhem and even the best mayhem participants and competitors can get absolutely cremated every now and then it just happens nature of the beast so guys i hope this has been an entertaining video i also hope it's been an educational video i hope i made the point as clearly as i possibly could i put a lot of thought into this because i don't like to just snap off the basic response to pull out your visa card if you have that ability cool i think a lot of people would benefit by remembering that it, that entropia is a game if you're willing to pay forty dollars a month for entertainment cool if you're willing to pay five dollars a month for entertainment 150 dollars a month whatever it is just make it a monthly entertainment expense and that will help grow the ped that you have on hand tremendously but i know a lot of people don't do that and a lot of people can't afford to do that so guys i hope this has been very very helpful 
I'm going to leave it there for today. If you guys want to help support us, you can do a couple of things. First of all, hit that like button because all the haters are out there waiting to hit the dislike button. Hit that bell and subscribe. That way, every time we post a video, you know. And head over to EarnPed.com because when you earn, we earn. And that is the best way to support us. Uh, guys, one final note. We are working on getting EarnPed Radio up and running. I do have more music videos ready, uploaded, and ready to launch. My problem is the software. I took an entire week off work for Mayhem and to get EarnPed Radio up and running, and it is a software issue. Uh, I have tried to fix it. I've tried to go in and fix the software myself. I cannot. I've gotten with the developer, and they are trying to figure out how to fix it. Because as it works, sits right now, it, it is a feature of the software that just does not function. No matter what you do, it, it, it not only malfunctions, it malfunctions drastically. Um, so until they can get that fixed, I'm kind of a sitting duck. I am working on some workarounds. Hopefully I will come up with something that works for us very, very quickly. Because I understand there's a lot of Stevies out there that are not able to use hideout.tv that are not able to do some of the offers on the website and I want to help you guys earn too so we're working on it bear with us if we can get the software developer to give us an answer that works we will get it up and running for you guys as fast as humanly possible till then just bear with us from everybody at EarnPed thank you guys thank you so much for all the support it means a ton we hope you had a better Halloween mayhem than we did because ours was a nightmare. But the good news is Christmas mayhem is just around the corner. It starts next month. So we've got another mayhem coming up, which is why this is the nightmare before Christmas mayhem. So guys, from everybody at EarnPed.com, I've been Stevie B. Sip, sip, smack, smack, F the haters. And we will see you guys very soon. Take care, Stevies.